The U.S. does not want to give Ukraine permission to strike its long-range weapons on Russian territory in the hope of resetting its relations with Moscow in the future. Political rights, citing sources. The White House and the Pentagon claim that Ukraine has the potential to win without this, the publication's source said. Part of the discussions concerns allowing British Storm Shadow missiles already in the Ukrainian arsenal to strike Russian airfields and supply depots inside Russia. Because the missiles contain American components, the Biden administration would have to agree to their use. The British government has not yet made a formal request, though it is conducting an internal review and the Biden administration is aware of the issue, according to officials on both sides of the Atlantic. One White House official said that using Storm Shadow or ATACMS against Russia may not be as effective as advertised. In addition, the Ukrainian military has a limited supply of such missiles and those it does have may not reach critical Russian targets that are already out of their range. 90% of the aircraft that launch glide bombs from Russian airspace at Ukrainian civilian infrastructure are already beyond the range of those missiles, a senior U.S. administration official told the publication. In response to the Ukrainians' request, the White House said the United States would eventually want to reset relations with Moscow and lifting restrictions on long-range strikes could undermine those efforts. Some in the upper echelons of Biden's national security apparatus believe Kyiv may be launching a public campaign to hedge against any potential significant loss of ground in Ukraine in the coming months, according to one person familiar with internal conversations between Washington and Kyiv. Ukrainians say they need more freedom of action and remain optimistic they can achieve it. There are some signs now that Biden might want to do something big in Ukraine, maybe lift some restrictions before the election, now that he's not running, said one senior Ukrainian advisor. The US already allows the use of its long-range missiles on Russian territory, but only for defensive purposes as counter-battery fire to hit Russian missile launchers just across the border firing at Ukraine. Our policy is to allow Ukraine to conduct counterfire to defend against Russian attacks coming through that border region, and that border region includes Kursk and includes Sumy. Pentagon spokeswoman Sabrina Singh told reporters in Russia, Ukrainians fighting in Russia are already using the American high-mobility artillery rocket systems to hit bridges, supply depots and Russian units using precision-guided munitions with the blessing of the United States. Ukraine's 3rd Separate Assault Brigade launched a counterattack in Kharkiv Oblast and advanced almost 2 square kilometers deep into the frontline area, the brigade said. As a result of counterattack actions, the brigade took control of the battalion defense area of the occupiers, enemy platoon, company strongholds and advanced almost 2 square kilometers into the front. The assault operations prevented the enemy's attack from the direction of Makievka and relieved tension from other critical frontline areas in the neighboring brigade zones, the brigade said. The main objective of the operation was to knock down the offensive potential of the 20th Army of the Russian Federation. At the moment, this task has been accomplished, Brigade Commander, Colonel Andrei Bailetsky said. The ratio of forces on the battlefield, 2.5 to 1 in favor of the enemy. Plus hostile support forces. It is noted that in four days, the enemy lost 300 horsepower in manpower, and a significant amount of equipment and weapons were destroyed or damaged. The uniqueness of the deal was that we attacked a superior enemy and won. Success depended on detailed planning, unconventional solutions, coordinated work of artillery, air defense, BPS and reconnaissance. But the heroes of the battlefield were tankers, sappers, scouts and, first of all, attack aircraft, the brigade commander said. Information about the operation has not been disclosed until now for security reasons. The assault actions diverted the enemy's attack in the direction of Makievka and relieved tension from other critical sections of the front in the areas of neighboring brigades. Now the occupiers are increasing the use of aviation, MLRS and long-range artillery. The enemy is trying to regain what was lost. But the third assault holds the lines. 
The main aim of the operation was to bring down the offensive potential of the 20th Army of the Russian Federation. At the moment, this task has been accomplished, Brigade Commander Bailetsky said. The 3rd Separate Assault Brigade is known to have been operating around the village of Barova in Kharkiv Oblast, as it reported the thwarting of a Russian attempt to make a breakthrough in the area in early July.